Good evening and welcome to Project Ready TV. I am your host, Angie Anderson Moten, and today is Career Day Fridays. Yeah. It is such a special day because we get to introduce new careers, new ventures for you guys to explore, ask questions about, and things of that nature. And so I always want you to remember that our sole purpose is to make sure everyone is graduating on time and that you are prepared for college, work, and life. So this is a brand new segment, uh, Career Day Fridays, and I'm so very honored to have Etty Gina Sitton Thomas. Now, what she wants to be called at this moment, but I know her as Gina, and Gina is coming on here to just tell us about a little bit about what she is doing um, in her career as a speech language pathologist, and I'm gonna let her explain all that to you. And we're gonna hop right in. So, welcome, Gina, and thank you for being on Project Ready TV. Thank you, Angie. Um, thank you, guys. Um, thank you for having me today. Um, I am Etty Regina Sitton Thomas. Um, I am a speech language pathologist in Greenville County Schools. Um, my official title is just that, speech language pathologist. Um, as written, it says MCD, SLP, which means I have a master's of communication sciences and disorders. And then CCCSLP means that I have clinical competence, um, which means I can go between schools, hospitals, nursing homes, um, private therapy, um, and now this new venture of teletherapy what we're doing. Um, in light of COVID-19. So that's what all those letters will mean. And that's what that means for me in this venture. Okay, well, before we really hop into all that good stuff that you just talked about, I want you just to um, tell us some little personal fun facts about yourself, maybe um, who you married to, how many kids you got, how many dogs, cats, whatever, whatever you would like the people to know. Something real personal about you before we just jump into what you're doing. All right, funny thing is, I know Angie because she's my sister, sister in love, but sister, no doubt. She thinks she's my oldest sister. And she's pretty. <laughs> I'm actually older as a 47, so I'm older, but um, I am married to her brother, Pharrell Thomas. Um, together, we have one dog, I have to say that first, <laughs> because that's my baby, Hoppy. And then we have one daughter and three boys. So that makes up our family. They're all big. We have one child in high school, uh, Nehemiah, who is going to the 11th grade. And um, after that, we'll be true empty nesters. No, you won't. I'm coming to stay. But anyway, I appreciate that good information. Let's hop right in. So what drew you to... Um, speech pathology, speech language pathology. Okay, so here is the the bread and butter of what happened to mm -hmm. me and what I did in school. Um, in high school, I went from Southside High School right here in Greenville, South Carolina, um, to the from their baccalaureate program. So when I started, baccalaureate program was only offered in first. It was only offered at Southside High School, and then it was able opened up to other high schools. So my home base school was Malden High School. So I ended up leaving Southside, going to Malden with a baccalaureate high school degree. Um, with that in mind, I did some, I did this program with Allied Health. Allied Health, we went to different, uh, we met at the hospital and we met with different um, careers. So they had speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, nursing, um, we had, oh gosh, of course, doctors and um, pharmacists. Uh, so we met with them weekly. And then it became throughout the summer for your junior, senior year, just keeping you um, informed of other careers. So that's really what happened. But I honestly never thought I would do it. It was just um, something I, I wanted on my college application, to be honest. Um, and I got all of that from the Great Urban League. So I was part of the League. Yes. But Urban League filled out my financial aid. I went there every week. I was a part of everything. If I remember correctly, 
uh, a man named Sinclair something did. I mean, he followed me throughout um, my undergraduate, actually. So um, Urban League got me together, honestly, because I had no idea how to do half of that. And honestly, neither did my uh, mom. She couldn't figure out all the financial aid stuff. So I went there and that's what happened. They encouraged us to do other things. And um, that's what drew me to it. Um, But I still was blind and have any idea. Wow. And I did not know that plug about the Urban League. So that is definitely special um, tonight hearing that. So how did your how did your education background look like after you you graduated from high school, you got to college? Like how many years did you spend studying? Um is there a difference between a speech pathologist and a speech therapist? Like what, what was your processing to get to where you are? Oh, now? And I have a long story short, I took the road less traveled. So mm-hmm. I went to Johnson C. Smith, which did not have this program. So I was thinking maybe I'd be a broadcast journalist. <laughs> so I was in communication um, there and it just was not what I, I wanted to do. Still, um, so I, I did not want to leave, but I wanted a career. So South Carolina State is exactly where I ended up going. That is um, where I started the, the speech pathology. And again, I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I was 22 years old transferring from a school where I would have graduated that next year um, with all of my other friends, but I decided that I needed I needed to be on a better path because I was not um, on a path where I knew it would lead into a career I wanted. Right. Something. So for me, I've just always wanted a career. So I ended up going to South Carolina State. I Again, I said I started late. So I started at 23 because I ended up coming home. So that was the next year. And I ended up graduating two years later. So I went and did that four-year program in two years by going to summer school for two years um, Mm -hmm. and doing, I had loaded classes the entire time. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, So what are some of your, the highlights of your career? Like, why do you love doing what you, you've been doing for all these many years? Exactly. So I started again, um, undergrad from South Carolina State and then graduating at 27, turning 28. Um, so then at this point, I'm a little older, but I, I figured that um, in this realm of speech pathology, I would work in the hospitals. So I started out as a hospital list, as a speech language pathologist, um, one of the few uh, areas and still is where we have women of color. So, of course, I was it was two of us. We actually went from undergrad to graduate school together and did everything together. Um, where we just went into the hospitals. We worked at Greenville Hospital System and Roger C. Peets and mm-hmm. NHC for a year. Um, and then we connected with mentors who uh, looked like us that really um, brought us in to private therapy, brought us into other areas in the schools, introduced us to other forms, just things that we did not know and were not getting um, in the big world of being in a hospital. We were we were young, basically, pushed out there in the hospital making life-ending decisions because speech but language pathologists, the pathologist part comes in where we make life-altering decisions. We're the mm-hmm. ones that tell doctors whether or not a patient can eat, swallow, brain injuries, um, dysphagia, which is another brain uh, issue, swallowing issues, or that's a a throat issue, aphasia is the brain issue. So we're the ones that have to make life altering decisions. And mm. again, I was young, had a lot of patients to die um, and it became a very uh, difficult path to bring in and keep doing day in. So I decided to go into the schools um, where I did both. So I went and did schools and then I did summers of hospitals. That's where I was school in the summer. I did that for the next four years. Um, of of my edu- or matriculation after my master's. So 
it's been a while. I've been in all areas. Mm -hmm. I'm now touching into teletherapy. So I never thought I would do it all either. (laughs) Wow. Well, you mentioned something a little earlier. You mentioned mentors. How do you feel about mentorship? We have a program at the Urban League that's, you know, it caters to, you know, mentees and mentors and then building relationships. And I heard you say that you had a mentor. How important do you think that that a mentor is? Um, Definitely you need a mentor. I have a mentor in every area of life. And believe it or not, not most people know that about me. Um, because I don't always talk about it, but I definitely need them. So my speech mentor is still here, still available. She now lives in California. I talk to her weekly, if not daily, through mm-hmm. social media still. Um, she's the one that tells me to this day I had a problem with teletherapy. So she's the one that got me going and making sure that I was comfortable in front of the screen, comfortable with providing the services, still telling me what I can do, what I should do. Um, So Tabitha is her name, and she's still my uh, mentor for school and speech. Definitely need it. And right now I have two that follow me that I'm mentoring them. So they're going to South Carolina State, um, and I absolutely love it. They families entrusted me just like we have entrusted Tabitha, because Tabitha is like my mom's other child at this point. Um, And then I have, of course, I definitely need the spiritual uh, as a mentorship to keep you going. Mm-hmm. Then you need the mental. you got to have somebody that's there to talk through the issues because you will develop a lot, um, encompassing a lot uh, doing this as a speech language pathologist. Um, and that can just be in any career. So I have them in all areas. I don't always talk about them, but I always talk to them. Um, and I believe that they're very important and I foresee continuing doing it. Uh, and very thankful for them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Good. Mentorship is important. Yes, it is. And I'm so glad that you um, gave that little bit of information to our students because they definitely need to hear it. So mentorship is definitely important. Even to our parents, mentorship is definitely important. Um, and it's never too late to find someone in your career, spiritual life, mental, you know, mental health, whatever the area is okay to find a mentor to help you um, maneuver throughout those areas. So let's switch gears a little bit. So we all know that that's what your career is. And if they didn't know, that's what they do now. But a lot of people know you also as um, the queen of salads. You are also an entrepreneur, in which I definitely, definitely love. Nobody sees the the background um, or nobody sees mm-hmm. all of the stuff that you do, you know, behind closed doors, working more than a nine to five. I mean, you really were all the time, especially right now with some of the stories you've been telling me about visiting, you know, your kids and trying to just reach out to them the best way you can um, during this time of COVID. But let's talk a little bit about um, custom salads. Um, Tell us about that, baby. All right. So not only am I a speech pathologist, and most people do not know that that's what I do through the day. So they think Mm -hmm. that what I do is I'm the salad lady, um, if you know that. uh, (laughs) All of it. Uh, And I carried it in my heart all day, but I'm not always doing it. Um, But I started Custom Salads by Gina in 2016, um, January of 2016. And uh, actually, I was just making salads because I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to eat better. And I I was just tired of getting uh, salads that were not made the way I wanted them. So I um, started making them started letting friends have them and then they started wanting to buy them and then uh, my husband was eating them taking them to work and everybody wanted them and it I went to bed and woke up and he actually created custom salads by Gina basically from the logo to the form to the definitely the Facebook uh, presence that I have is all because of him and then um, Angie comes on and does the back end now but That's not really always me at this point. Um, He started it. He did it. And I'm just the one 
making the salads. That's all I ever want to do. I just want to make the salad. <laughs> but they make me do the business part. Um, and so as an entrepreneur, um, you've got to learn how to modify and adjust. If you backtrack to being a speech language pathologist, you definitely have to modify and adjust. I go from different emotions in the day um, and still currently do to provide that therapy very seriously to a child to sometimes they just need love. Um, and if I don't love on them, their parents need love. Um, if I'm in a school building, the teacher needs love because she doesn't understand what the child is trying to say or doing or why. So um, I do a lot of code switching back and forth. And so that helps me with my switching into entrepreneurship. Um, I realized then that I would be retiring very early because I started very early in the backtracking. I was able to stay at home for a year when I did undergrad, the grad school, maybe two years, and save money. So I actually bought a lot of my years in the South Carolina system. So I'm going to retire very early now. Um, so I have less than six years to retire. So my plan was, what am I going to do <laughs> Uh, when I retire. So this is how Custom Salad started. It's now become this huge, huge, great business venture um, that I think that I'm slow building. Sometimes it's fast building, uh, but I'm slowly building and I want to have in place for the next six years so I can run right into it and um, be ready to roll. Uh, give it all I got for the for the remaining, that's my plan. That's what I plan to do. Um, and so far, so good. That's amazing. And, and um, you're such a hero in our community. You do so much. And pe a lot of people don't even know what you do. And you're such a giver. I know every time I say, oh, can you do salads for my kids? You definitely said yes and whatever. But you are a giver. And I'm a lot of people, I'm pretty sure, don't see that because you don't um, do it in a way to get recognition. But you are definitely a community leader with everything that you do. And one more question before we um, before I let you go. What do you feel about balance? Now, I know you've talked about having people, but what do you do for fun or how do you kind of balance that out? So it's not always work, work, work and switching from a speech pathologist to a business owner, entrepreneur, you know, all of that. How do you, what do you do? What does Gina do to let her hair down? So, um, well, you know what I had to learn to do and found another mentor to help me develop and, and keep in mind what I needed to do for this was I learned to exercise. Um, hmm. I committed myself to getting up at 4 a.m. I run, lift weights. Um, and when I'm running, that's my time with God. People think, oh my God, you're running five miles. But really, that's my time to connect with God. And then I plan my day right out there on Woodruff Road running. Um, and it's really helped me to uh, switch and change gears. Because not only do I do that, I'm married with a family. So I have right. to switch and do that. Um, mm -hmm and be a better person. So whatever I commit myself to for school, salads, I have to get that um, equally at home. So that's mm -hmm. very hard, but you have to be able to um, set it in your mind and, and move forward. Do you do it right all the time? No. Do I get it right all the time? No. Right. But, um, <laughs> I'm here every day. And I'm trying to do it every day. Um, and then as I age, we've got aging family. So I have a lot that I do. Uh, but again, I give to myself first by exercising, and then I don't mind giving the rest to anybody else. So that's very important. And so yeah. my trainers, because I have two that I um, see, they're my mentors when it comes to that. So okay. yeah, 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 that's really good. Yeah, well, we have learned a lot. I appreciate you coming on for a little while to talk with us. Um, tell the people how they can follow you, especially with custom salads. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, my so social media is always custom salads by Gina. Um, Gina, Sid and Thomas Facebook. Uh, that's the same for Instagram. The Salad Lady is Twitter. Um, what else do I have? LinkedIn is the same mm -hmm. uh, for custom salads by Gina. Uh, and if you wanted to just know me, and I really want to encourage this for the students, if you're thinking about doing anything, 
in this time. I have never, and I need you to understand, I have never wanted for a job, mm. no matter what the layoff is. And I'm blessed for that. I have rarely interviewed for one. <laughs> I mm. think I interviewed one or two times when I was in my 20s. I've not interviewed since. Because when they want you, they, they send you a text, email, or they'll find you. And you just, you start to work with, as long as you have your credentials and you have been good, it'll come to you. So I want you to think about that when you think about a career. When you think about when you're going to school, think about what's important. Lifelong. I want you to have a good time, but think about the lifelong. What is it going to look like for you? Um, because I never thought that would be true. Um, I remember my uh, professor saying that. Um, but it's true. Here I am. And I'm telling you, I don't want for a job. If I, and I don't want to leave Greenville County, but if I had to, there would be several others ready to take. And I get those offers daily. I turn them down daily. Um, so just want you to know that when you're thinking about it, we need more um, minorities to be present, to be in our healthcare system. Uh, not just speech, it can be physical therapy, OT, it can be doctors. We need you. Um, we need your presence. The world will need your presence. Um, what I've learned in this COVID-19, if it was not for us as minorities putting forth what we knew best about our health, uh, mm -hmm. we would not have been able to say, listen, our communities are being attacked. This is where it's starting. Um, but definitely obesity is where it is. But we don't think about that when we think about our swallowing and brain issues. Um, I didn't realize how many speech pathologists were actually on these teams of COVID-19 right in New York because these patients are trait. Mm -hmm. We trait them. We trait you. We need to see what's in your throat. So it's us. Um, so that's just how important it is. And they can't get enough. I got an offer to go to New York and I've not worked in the hospital in years. I would actually be afraid to make that diagnosis, mm. to be honest. So um, definitely didn't take it, but it's there. So think about that. Think about moving forward um, and, and, and what it looks like and what it will look like for you and what's important to you. Um, definitely the money is great. Again, I've had a little bit of everything. I was making more money probably in the hospital system than at any point, but I had better um, opportunities in the school. So you got to outweigh that too, mm -hmm. but it's all possible. So um, think about it. And hey, if school is not for you, entrepreneurship, if you need to look out in there, the world is open. Go out and do it. Whatever it is, be great at what you do. That's a great way to end our segment. Again, Gina, thank you so much for taking time out. Uh, please like and share this video. Um, we'll definitely tag Gina in it. So all Gina's friends, come, come, come share any thoughts, concerns, questions. If you have any of those, you can still reach the Urban League at 864-244-3862. Um, contact us. We are still working. We're working remotely, but someone will be in contact with you. Or if you have um, comments, you can put them in the bottom of the video, or you can email us at Project Greenville at urbanleagueupstate.org. And as always, I have definitely enjoyed this this time, this segment with you, Gina, with you, the audience. Thank you, thank you for and I me. hope to see you back here next week. My name is Angie Anderson Moulton. And until next time, good night.